Okay guys, we officially have Season of Discovery Phase 3 confirmed. We got bunch of new stuff from 10 new levels, new runes, to new gear in dungeons, PvP sets, profession items and more. And with phase 3 being over the horizon, let's see how big impact will all of these have on Druids. Will they be better or will they get outperformed once again? We are starting with 10 new talent points. For Feral Druid, there could be a several different spendings which depend if we play PvE or PvP. For PvE, we are now able to complete whole Feral Tree and also go with a fewer but i wouldn't go that way because we have five more talents to spend particularly nowhere so we are definitely going for balance tree and natural weapons to increase all our physical attack damage by 10 percent you can pick between riot and natural grass on start which are two completely useless talents for pve but we need them to advance down further when we pick either we are able to proceed to natural weapons and that's exactly where our 10 points will be spent to pity we don't have one more talent to make it to omen of clarity which we use in phase one for that we'll need to wait until phase four but when we talk about PvP, there are a couple of different builds with some small changes here and there. The best thing in this phase is surely that we are now able to take both full Feral Tree and Fuhrer in same time, which wasn't the case in last phase. That will boost our intellect, which we heavily need for shapeshifts and strength, critical strike, and on other side we will still get our energy when we shapeshift from Fuhrer. This way you got 4 more points to spend elsewhere like Natural Grasp, Feral Aggression for ferocious bite or feral instincts it's up to you other solution for pvp build would be mana oriented build to decrease that heavy mana costs on shape sheets for that we'll need to sacrifice either feral tree and bump out leather or pack and some points from heart to the wild or fairy fire or to sacrifice Fuhrer completely. Fuhrer is a must for PvP in my opinion and I prefer sacrificing some offensive stats instead. But if we drop 3 points of Heart of the Wild, we'll also drop 11% of Intellect and got 30% decreased mana on shapeshifts. Seems like not good thing to do. So all in all, I don't see it still worth going for natural shapeshifter for a couple of reasons, at least not in this phase. First is what I just mentioned about losing Intellect to get mana reduction is absurd. Second is that we are playing Season of Discovery and not the real classic, which is completely different. SOD favors burst meta and fast fights where healing, reopen, skiting are on the margin. So usefulness of that amount of shapeshifts is on the question mark, except it's a rogue fight. On other side, balance and restoration druids don't have anything significantly new when it comes to talents. As a boonkin, we still can't get insect swarm because it requires 11 points. So you'll be feeling Moon Fury, and then you can go for a shapeshifter if you're playing PvP because it can be really lethal for kiting and switching forms in 1 vs 1 fights. Combine it with Wild Growth or Live Bloom runes and Rejuviation, and you become unkillable while your dots doing the job. Your Moonkin form will be only 200 mana and traveling form like 120, which is insane having in mind that you will be sitting in 4k plus mana. After it, you can go whatever you feel could be useful, really, whatever. Nothing will make some significant impact from now because we are still missing 10 points up until level 60 to make really meaningful talents. And the rest of Druid will now finally be able to finish Resto Tree and become a healer. When we talk about abilities on level 44, we are finally getting Box King, which is also our last ability in game. We waited for this only defensive ability for ages. Nothing more to say about spells, but we can advance to runes because the confirmed one is related to Box King. <laughs> So we got two confirmed runes so far, Improved Boss Skin and Gore. Improved Boss Skin says we can now cast it on allies while shapeshifted and it doesn't penalize our cast time and combat speed. My reaction on this rune is meh. Nothing really special here, casting into allies is a greater healer or off healer and this could maybe be preparation for arena in far future, who knows. Other confirmed rune is gore. I don't really understand the first part where it says using a lacerate which is hand rune has 15% chance to reset mangle which is also a hand rune. How do we wear two different runes in same time or I'm missing something? But using swipe as a tank could be a nice way to proc this rune often as a nice damage bonus and build some bonus rage which bears have hard time dealing with. 
on other side using Mangle or Shred, as a cat you have 5% chance to reset Hogus Fury, which with King of the Jungle restores 60 energy and boosts our damage by 15%. This could also be a very good boost of damage in boss fights, where we spam Shreds tirelessly. But I don't see a room for this rune in PvP, where you usually hit 4 to 5 Shreds at most in a single fight. Proc rate is just too freaking low for PvP. Another problem is that both of these runes are for head slot. It's less likely we are getting anything different for head slot. So we will need to choose between these for PvP and PvE, which is, I would say, not so good. Now let's jump on unconfirmed runes where boss Kin and Gore were 3 days ago before they were confirmed. Let's start with one I found the most attractive, it's improved Pranzar regeneration of free slot. This is bear spell now usable in all forms and it now converts any of resources into health, energy, rage or mana. I think this rune will be very very good defensive cooldown for all 3 specs, especially for fell druid and cat form. Cats will have surely around 3-3. 3.5k health without buffs and bears could end up to 5k. So imagine healing for 300 health in cat form every damn second as a cat. This changed whole perspective on our gameplay in PvP. With boss skin and this, we are now actually able to fight face to face in a cat form with some melee classes like paladins, warriors, shamans without being one shot on their crits. Not to mention tank bear with a lot of stamina and buffs pulling range up to 70 plus and then using this. You could end up getting 700 health per second or 10 seconds, which is nothing other than insane. Also, Balance Druid could pull out some very sticky situations too with this ability. It will cost 50% mana for 10 seconds, but in combination with Innervate, this is really golden combo for PvP. This rune has huge potential to be honest. Boom! In the moment of making this video we got one more unconfirmed rune and this one is very interesting at least for boomies and again it's made for PvE. The loon's far extends duration and damage over time effects which will allow boomies to cast more rats and star fires and lose less global cities and instant abilities like moonfire and sunfire. This is clearly another damage booster and it definitely rocks for boomies in PvE. But for ferals we just got extension or rip by 2 seconds, why not rake as well? I think blizzard hates feral in this expansion so freaking bad. I am not fascinated with this rune at all. Other two unconfirmed runes are gale winds, increasing damage done by hurricane by 100% and reducing its mana. What the hell did I just read? God, this is nothing but farming rune. Ok, I have to admit it's a feral, I have very hard time farming anything. But guys, come on. And the last unconfirmed rune is a fluorescence that will actually make Rasta Druids, Rasta Druids going all down to Swift Man instead of playing some balance trees, some hybrid builds, and more. With phase 3 we got some new features and one of them is new itemization. We are now getting PvP sets with active bonuses for the first time, which are great news for all 3 Druids packs. Keep in mind that survival instinct from phase 2 and potential rune improved friends eyed. In phase 3 scale with our HP, this could be a blast. It's not only about abilities but about stamina in general. In this bursting meta it always comes handy against certain specs like rogues, shamans, hunters and so on. With all of these I don't expect Juice to be humiliated by rogues that easy. This is just another plus for survivability to keep that burst from some classes within normal numbers. Unless devs come up with some idiotic PvE items with some random idiotic offensive procs. All in all, we surely got some good news, alas, but mentionable. Ok, some are not confirmed yet and some problems remain existable. We are gonna obviously get improved defensive capabilities in phase 3, which is something I really care about as a PvP player. In phase 2, it was one of the biggest problems for druids and I usually had to sacrifice king of the jungle to get at one defensive ability survival instinct. Now it's a little bit different with box skin and friend's eye. Not only feral druids, but 
battles of rest and balance will benefit from PvP gear and potentially improve friends' eye. Other thing is mana. Even though it's less likely we are chasing natural shapeshifter to get mana reduction, we gotta admit that this phase will be slightly less painful for Feralos due to 5 out of 5 Heart of the Wild and more intellects in general, which shifts remain the same cost. However, mana issues for Feralos will be there until we reach phase 4. Balance Druid solved this problem in this phase. While I see Rasta Druid doing some very good healing on battlegrounds and raids with new potential rune and finally whole restoration tree. However, some of the problems remain there. No any kind of slow for Feral Druid in PvP, still got mana problems on shapeshifts, no runes that will allow us bonus killing from agility and so on. At least, these defensive look pretty decent, of course if they happen. If Friend's Eye is just a speculation and it doesn't happen, or some kind of rune with same defensive power, I would consider this phase very bad for Feral Druids when it comes to PvP. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section, what do you think about potential runes, talents and capabilities of Druids? Thanks for watching and see you soon!